what can we learn from studios like this and bring them into our home studios without spending thousands and thousands of dollars? And it's really only two things I want to talk about. I'm in a professional studio called Panorama Studios. That's owned by a really good friend of mine. His name's Alex Prava. He's a producer and mix engineer. He owns the studio and he's also produced the last of uh, my last two albums. Like my home studio, I don't have all this stuff, right? And I don't expect you to have all this stuff in your home studio. There's thousands and thousands of dollars, right? In pro and professional studios. First thing is room, the room you're in, the literal, literal room. You have to know what you're, you're hearing and what you're listening to. If you're in a bad room, you're not knowing what you're making. I really underestimated this when I first started making music. Like there's pictures of me when I first started making music. I had a terrible set of speakers, no acoustic treatment, sound reverb bouncing everywhere. I thought it sounded great though. Then you you start making more music, you start working with professionals in environments like this, and then you realize, oh yeah, uh, your room matters a ton. So that's the first thing. How can you make your room sound better? The first thing is you need to acoustically treat your room. Take a look at this room. Look at the ceilings. There's acoustic treatment. The corners behind the speakers. The speakers are actually in, in the wall with acoustic treatment. Special curtains that protect the glass from sounding off. There's carpet. That's the biggest thing for the room is acoustically treating your room. You can start with the corners. You can honestly make your own acoustic treatment. It's kind of like the pink insulation that you would see in like a suburban home. And then you can just put wood around it and some canvas on the front to make it look nice. Once you acoustically treat your room, then you're going to get a much better perspective on the sound you're making. You probably have some friends that are into music, get their perspective on it. Maybe you have someone that's better than you. Bring them into your room and ask them how you can make it, you can make it better. Because if you don't, you don't know, right? If you, especially if you're starting new, I didn't know at the beginning. I didn't even need, I didn't even no, you need any of this. That's the first thing about the room. The second thing about the room would be noise in the room. It's hard to, to capture this feeling over video through the microphone, but if I just stop talking, there's no sound at all whatsoever. Like there's no computer fans, there's no AC units, there's no, no one screaming outside. I don't know why someone would be screaming, but so it's completely quiet. Like no sound, which means you can get a great perspective of what's coming out of the speakers. But if you want to record a vocal in here or record a guitar, it's the perfect environment to do that. The cool thing about this and how I got the idea to put in my home studio was my computer fan always runs. And notice we have a computer, but there is no, no fan. The computer is actually in the other room and it's just connected through the wall. You can do that in your home studio you could just drill a small hole in in the wall to a uh, connecting room and just have the computer on the other side just connect it through a thunderbolt cable or you can maybe connect it to a closet and then shut the door and at least it's blocked that way or what you could do is just put it on your under the desk and maybe cover it so that's like the second thing about the room which is what i learned from here and was really inspired by and then the third thing is obviously, what are you listening to the sound from? So what speakers are you using? If you're trying to mix and you want to be a mixing engineer, you're going to likely want to have two monitors so you can monitor your mix differently with different perspectives, like different um, frequency perspectives. If you are just producing, you could kind of be a little bit sluggish on, on the room. And I mean, I don't want to say sluggish, but like you can be a little more lax on that kind of thing because I digress. Just don't listen to anything I just said there. It's good to have a good room and a good set of speakers. So use those three things. Acoustically treat your room, get rid of your computer fan noise, and buy nicer speakers if you can. You're going to have a much better perspective of the sound in your home studios. Second thing that pro studios have that you can bring into your home studios uh, at a slow rate would be gear and equipment, which are kind of like the same thing in my opinion. Instruments, synthesizers, pianos, drum sets, organs, Wurlitzers, controllers, pump organs, couches, guitar amps, bass amps, preamps, compressors, SSL boards. There's a ton of equipment in pro studios. One, because you need a lot of this equipment so you can give people a variety of what they can record. But in your home studio, you can be a bit more narrow and you can say, I use a synthesizer a lot, so I'll buy a synthesizer. Why? Because I think it's going to help stimulate more creativity for your music. And I get this all the time. That's what inspires me in places like this is when you're using instruments and gear that you don't have versus staring at your MIDI controller and just looking at the computer and using the same software instrument. I do find it a struggle sometimes when I'm just working with software instruments and I'm just staring at the screen like, 
and just on my MIDI controller, sometimes it's just nice to stand up and be in a different position somewhere. So this is the question, right? Does gear matter? Does equipment matter? Yes, it does matter, but, but no, it doesn't because you can still make really, really great music using software synth and use just using a MIDI controller, but good equipment and nailing the performance will take, will bring you up another, another level. I think it just comes down to whatever the song is at the end, whatever you made it with. I don't care if it was made on a plastic piece of junk. If it makes me feel something, then I like the song. That's what music is about. You're supposed to feel something. That's it. It's short, this video. There's, it's just two things that I get inspired by every time I'm in a studio like this. As always, thanks for watching. It really means a lot that you guys stick around and watch to the end of the videos go give alex music a listen to he's produced for tons of big artists also big german artists big english singer songwriters and also my own music so you can go listen to that as well and i'll see you in the next video